tears that I, that, I, that I end up springing are also part of that project in liberation. All right, so don't ask me if I'm okay yet. I think I am. All right, but if I start to break down, please feel free to pass a napkin or two. <laughs> the light is different than the Caribbean. It behaves differently. A consequence of our location, we could argue. Light in a different place, full of different things, will be different. Two seasons of varying lengths, wet and dry. Unannounced, clouds will gray into a curtain of rain that makes its <coughs> way along the northern range, draping Valencia, Aruca, Tunapuna, Barataria. Then a darker gray, like the coast of Guadeloupe or Martinique at dusk, its powder blue and yellow lights. The near black pylons at Portsmouth, the black sands of Merho. The obstinate filters of bush and mist at midday on the Blanchichers Road, twilight in Bastet. The insistent staccato blue of police lights, water, impossibly blue, or green or brownish, near Point of Pierre or Labre, where the asphalt buckets languish in the memory. Reddish, like you run off near Kingston, or white, crashing mercilessly at the rocks in Topo during the King Tide, or bursting out of a standpipe near Mont Lacour, or Cedrus, where we sometimes stop to buy drinks that glisten and sweat in this heat. Night fires at Galiota, Leaping from the tired waves and up, up the eroding hill. Night fires at Labas, near the wharf, the hospital, the cemetery. Our skins inhabiting that light. Absorbing the truths. You learn the rhythm, but cannot follow along before catching yourself. You've been here before. Stumbling about drunk with ease as you rush to make a fool of yourself in front of them. You, you bring it into syllables in your head now, rationalizing it. Pa, pa, ta, ta, pa, ka, ta, 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 ta. You feel your body rehearse, your muscles tensing here and there, your pursing lips and tapping tongue tread carefully. The camaraderie of casual identification has its risks where demons are concerned. It can be enough to strike you dumb and motionless when you see how much they resemble you. And to know that these are similarities and that they are more than the crude mimicry of your daily practice. You have not crushed Ricketts blue blocks mixed with lard in the hilltop yards of Paramin for an impossible blue. There are no clouds in your bedroom. Your aversion to stains is well reasoned. You know only traces are patois, kept as trinkets. Mine are from women who have loved me from time to time. Bon moi. <laughs> no kiss comes. Bon moi souple. A kiss comes, reluctantly. Well, well. Dream. Dream only to wake in want of a kiss. You are an outsider. An avowed castaway. But they will see through you. They will see that you have long stopped believing in the power of blue to ward off Maljo. Having gone some distance from your beginnings, you place no truth in bad eye or in the various evils others can do. Your superstitions are undone by theories, debunked by modernized and postmodern things, by a cynicism that sustains you. You know that to theorize effectively, you must first learn to forget where you come from. Forgetting isn't new to you. Your fears of an encroaching post-humanity have eclipsed your sense of the supernatural. Forgetting that the Sukunya, the Lagahu, the Dwen have long perfected their methodologies. You've grown up to ask in all seriousness, what does a maroon care about new things? You will dismiss the absurdity of your response and recoil as they approach you. Patak-tak, pakatak tak calling yourself Caliban-esque. A child of Caliban, you will laugh like an orphan. But they will see. 
and they will make you uncomfortable. Not so much with what they see, but because your pretensions are useless. In 2014. Now, you know you're in the right place when, I'll open it back in a second, when you come in a place, pan plane, but not the stereotype hits you. Is the fact that almost every song the pan has played is a song that I used to theorize on Caribbean rhetoric. All right? So during my, um, when I was doing my doctorate, I was arguing that Caribbean people have a rhetorical tradition, that we have a rhetoric. And when I pose the idea, now it sounds great to me because I've been saying it for 10 years, but when I pose the idea to my committee, they watch me like I shook it. <laughs> what do you mean, all you have a rhetoric? Can you, can you say that there is such a thing as Caribbean rhetoric? And I was like, well, A, I can't tell you because I'm a Caucasian. <laughs> I mean, of course, I came in the form of a smile. Well, yeah, you know that is, you know. But then I realized that even my response was rhetorical. I realized that my response required explanation. That my response to the to the to the insult, the outrage, that there is a rhetorical tradition, and that how dare I suggest it, was to smile and say, hmm, "You know, Nabe," mm -hmm. because that is part of what we do. <laughs> so to get back to the pan, I hear him, Audrey, where you get her the irony, of course, is that so many of us suffer from diabetics. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and, 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 and trying to think about what that means in the context of contemporary Caribbean health is interesting to me. And the only way to read that effectively is to do so through a lens of Caribbean expression, Caribbean understanding, Caribbean worldviews. Secondary to that, is anything anybody else wants to bring, but I view Caribbeanness not in opposition to empire, but as a fundamental taken for granted parity. I might be small, but a talawade. You know that kind of way. So this is what I'm trying to to, to, to get people to to understand. So there it is I go on to San Fernando, not to San Fernando, Trinidad. I'm from San Fernando, bless you. Um, and I decided that I want to photograph blue devils. I don't know who sent it, all right? I still don't know who sent it. It was inspired. This is an inspired project, and I believe in inspiration. I believe in spirit. I believe in things that guide you without explanation, all right? Um, so there I was photographing people who I had not met before I put a camera up to them. I had only seen them maybe so, <coughs> I keep in this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Smelling good too, man. So I shoot at these blue devils, and I realized that I felt more at home there than I had in the 25 years that I'd spent in the States. Not because the States isn't a home or can't be a home, but Home is where you happen to be in a given moment. And if you never really feel in place, that sense of uprootedness is going to dig at you. And it dug at me for a quarter of a century. You know, you're gonna find home wherever you find it. But for me, this was where I found it, and I realized that I owed them something. You know, sometimes you know that I talk about pay the devil. Pay the devil, jab, jab, you're the devil. Right? Yep. Pay the devil. Well, this is how I pay them. I pay them with love, with respect, honoring their stories, honoring my own, honoring the fact that they had no reason whatsoever to accept me for however long they did. And every time we sit down and talk, they bring up this project about what it has meant to them. That is something that I cannot pay back. 